Hi there, I'm Brett, and today on Math Hacks, we are learning polynomial long division. It turns out that polynomial long division is a whole lot like regular long division, which may or may not be good news to you, depending on how long it's been since you've done long division. But don't worry, I anticipated that, so we are going to warm up with a good old-fashioned long division problem, and then we'll move into polynomial long division. By that point, you'll see a lot of similarities between the two, and I think you'll get a real good feel for how polynomial long division works. So just like I said in the introduction, polynomial long division is long division with polynomials, which means that we need to know how to do long division. And I know that is a thing of the past and you hoped you'd forgotten it after fourth grade, but it is back. And so I'm going to begin with the warm up. I'm gonna just walk you through long division. If you are a pro at long division and you know exactly how to do it, then you can fast forward through this first example and move straight to the polynomial long division. But I think that if you're a little rusty on the steps, it can be really useful to see it with numbers before we move into doing it with variables as well. So let's start with a regular old school long division problem. Now, remember that 12 is called our divisor and 4,380 is in the place of the dividend. Now, we want to begin by seeing how many times we can place our divisor into the first digit of our dividend. And in this case, 12 doesn't go into four. So I'm going to just go ahead and move to the second number. Now that means I'm going to look for how many times 12 goes into 43. And it goes into 43 three times because three times 12 is 36. So I'm going to go ahead and write a three above the second digit and subtract out the product, which is 36. The next step is to take the next digit and bring it down. So eight is going to now get attached to the seven, which makes 78. And I'm going to see how many times I can put 12 into 78. I can do that six times since six times 12 is 72. So I'm going to do that and then subtract the product of six times 12. And lastly, I'm going to bring down the final digit and append it to the six to make six. Now I'm going to see how many times 12 can go into 60 since 12 times five is 60. I'm going to put a five up here and subtract their product, which is 60. And I'm left with zero. Remember that this value here is called the remainder. And that's going to be important in our polynomial long division. In this problem, we don't have a remainder, so we don't have to write anything else up here. And our answer is simply 365. Now that we've recapped long division, let's jump into polynomial long division. So in this problem, I want to divide 6x squared minus 26x plus 12 by the binomial x minus 4. And this division is going to work a lot like our regular long division with a couple exceptions. So now that I have variables, I also have multiple terms here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to focus on this first term. And I'm going to ask myself, what could I multiply x with to get 6x squared? Or in other words, 6x squared divided by x is what? Of course, 6x squared divided by x leaves me with 6x. So I'm going to go ahead and write 6x above this first term. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this 6x times the x and write it here and then also multiply it with the constant. So I'm going to multiply it with minus 4 and write that product under the next term. Just like I did in regular long division, I subtracted off those products. I'm going to do the same here. So I'm going to subtract and then just to make it easy, I'm going to subtract 24x which is going to turn it into a plus sign. So I'm just going to flip the signs 
6x squared minus 6x squared is 0, which is what should happen, right? Because we chose this value so that it matched 6x squared. And then negative 26x plus 24x is equal to minus 2x. Just like in our regular long division up here, we bring down the next term. And this time I'm just going to write plus 12 on the end. And we're going to repeat the exact same process. So I want to see what multiplied with x gives me negative 2x. Or in other words, minus 2x divided by x equals what? And when I do that, I need a minus 2 here. So minus 2 times x is minus 2x. And then I'm also going to multiply that with the negative 4. So negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8. Lastly, I'm going to subtract, so I'm going to flip the two signs. And I get 0 here and 12 minus 8, which is 4. Now that I'm at the very end and I have nothing left to bring down, this is my remainder. Now this is going to work exactly the same as if you had a remainder up here. If we had a remainder on this number, we would simply add the remainder over the divisor onto our number. We're going to do the exact same here. We're going to take the remainder, write it over the divisor, and then instead of just appending it to it, we're going to write a plus sign since we're working with a polynomial. So that's going to look like plus 4 divided by x minus 4. So that is the answer to your polynomial long division. So in this problem, we're given 9x squared minus x plus 5 divided by 3x squared minus 7x. So the first thing I want to do is rewrite it in the long division form. So the number on top is going to go on the inside and then we are dividing it by the number on bottom. All right, let's begin this problem just like we did with the last one. We are going to look at the first term and we want to see what we could multiply it with to get 9x squared. So to do that, I need to multiply by 3. So I'm going to put a 3 up here since 3 times 3x squared gives me 9x squared exactly. Once again, I'm going to multiply that number also with the other term in my divisor. So here I have 3 times negative 7x to make negative 21x. And I'm going to subtract minus 1x plus 21x is positive 20x. Next, I'm going to bring down that next number. Since 3x squared has a higher power than 20x, I am done with my division here, and this is going to be the remainder. So I'm simply going to write it over top of 3x squared minus 7x. So I'm going to begin by writing out my long division and the x minus 2 is what I am dividing by so it's going to go on the outside. I begin by looking at the first term on my divisor and seeing what I could multiply with it to get x to the fourth. So since x times x cubed is x to the fourth, I'm going to place an x cubed up here and then I'm going to multiply it to both and subtract. Here I've brought down the next term, which is x squared. And I'm going to repeat this process all over again. So x times what would give me x cubed? That is x squared. So I'm going to put a positive x squared up here. x squared times x is x cubed. And x squared times negative 2 is minus 2x squared. Again, I flip the signs and add. What multiplied with x gives me 3x squared? That would be a positive 3x. So I'm going to write plus 3x up here. 
and then multiply it through. 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times negative 2 is minus 6x. Again, I'm going to subtract. I'm going to bring down the last term, which is plus 2. What times x gives me 5x? Well, that would be positive 5. So I'm going to write plus 5 up here and multiply it through. And really tiny here because I'm running out of space. I get 2 plus 10 is 12, and that is going to be my remainder. So I'm going to write that as plus 12 over x minus 2. In this final example, we are going to look at a case that often trips students up and causes errors. So in this scenario, we have x to the fifth plus 3x cubed minus 6 divided by x minus 1. And what's different about this polynomial division is that our dividend, or a thing being divided, doesn't have all the powers here. See how there's no x to the fourth term, or x squared, or x term? Now for polynomial long division to work, you must have all of those terms written down, even if they aren't here. So what we do when they're not here is we write in a 0x to the 4th term, and a 0x squared term, and a 0x term. That doesn't change our equation, but it accounts for all of those scenarios. So when I set up this problem, I'm going to be careful to include those extra terms. So now that I have all of the powers accounted for, I can go ahead and begin my division just like we've been doing in all the previous problems. I'm going to start by looking at the first term and I want to pick a value for here that when multiplied with x gives me x to the fifth. So that will be x to the fourth. I'll also multiply x to the fourth with negative one and I'll get minus one x to the fourth. And that there is why it's important to have all the powers accounted for, so that way we can actually subtract one x to the fourth from something of like terms. Now I'm going to do the exact same process all over again x times what gives me 1x to the fourth? That would be x cubed, so I'm going to write a positive x cubed up here, and then multiply it through. So I went ahead and brought down the next term, which is 0x squared, and I'm going to start my process all over again. x times what gives me 4x cubed, so I would need a 4 x squared to get that, so plus 4x squared up here, and then I multiply it through. For the next one, I need x times what to get 4x squared, so that will be 4x, so 4x times x is 4x squared and 4x times negative 1 is minus 4x. Again, this 0x term is coming in handy. And I say x times what gives me 4x? I need a positive 4 here. So 4 times x is 4x, and 4 times negative 1 is minus 4, and subtract. This is my remainder, so whenever I have a remainder, I write it over my divisor and I add it to the polynomial. Since this is a negative, I could simply write a minus sign here and then do 2 over x minus 1. Thank you so much for watching Math Hacks. If you'd like to help out the Math Hacks channel to keep more tutorials like this, coming your way. There's two things you can do. They're quick and easy. One, give this video a big thumbs up to recommend it. And two, if you haven't already, join the Math Hacks community by clicking the subscribe button below. Till next time, I'm Brett, and thank you so much for learning with me.